Okay, so coming up on the episode this week, we start a brand new build for 2026, and this here is a very small version of myself. But on this episode, we're going to be scaling that up to 170 kV drone motor from T Motor. So there you go, we're going to be putting ourselves in a flight pack, a jet pack, if you will, but we're calling it the drone pack. And the episode starts right now. Racing and Chandra, Racing and Chandra, Racing, yeah! Welcome to the show, the Chandra Racing Show! And we are your hosts, I'm Harry. And I'm Richard, thanks very much for joining in on this brand new 2026 build series. Yes, we're kicking off the year and getting jumping straight into it. So if you haven't done already, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done already. That's right, add your comments because this series is all about making impossible possible. That's yes. right. <laughs> what we are dubbing the drone pack. Yes, so we got uh, going to cover three main aspects uh, for you guys. And the first one is we're going to be styling it in a cyberpunk styling. Yes, that's right. Cyberpunk styling and we're going to be using that and coming up with concepts using AI generation images. Yes, and the second part is we're going to be jumping into propulsion system. How are we going to do that? That's right, we're going to unbox and look at the, the drone VTOL motors and that will be happening also very shortly. Yes, and on the, lastly on this episode, we will be making a miniature version of this creation and there you go to give a bit more illustration of what's happening. That's right, because this particular guy is full scale. It is one to one, so we'll start with a miniature, just like the pros do. Okay, so saying all that, let's jump into it and the episode starts right, right now. Okay. okay, so here we go. So what are we going to be making on this new series, Richard? Okay, so we're going to be making a real life flight pack. Yes, a flight pack, an exosuit and styled in a cyberpunk feel. There you go, so that's the plan and it's going to be a real flying us. There you go, so that's the plan, and yeah. we're going to be wearing it. What are the three aspects that make up this um, project for 2026? Okay, so one, make a, a flight pack. So we've got some drone motors, yep. and ESCs and propellers. Yep. So we're going to stay tuned in a couple of minutes, they'll be um, diving into what those parts are. Oh yeah, specifically for this project, yep. That's right, so that will be, what, effectively mounted on our back. Yep, that's the plan. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> so yes, and yes, it will be RC already controlled. Yes. And safety will be uh, at the, thought uh, about. Yeah, uh, uh, considered. Uh, yeah, and safety will be at 100%. So there you go, so don't worry about all that stuff, but we'll go into more of that in the series. What is cyberpunk? What's, what's the, what's the, uh, what's, what's cyberpunk? I guess we we'll just ask Siri and see what she comes oh, yeah. up with. Siri, what's cyberpunk mean? Cyberpunk means a genre of science fiction set in a lawless subculture of an oppressive society dominated by computer technology. There you go, there you go, thanks for that, Siri. So basically, it's Blade Runner, so there you go. And we will be doing that style because we, we think it's quite cool with this futuristic design. Yeah, so we're gonna be um, diving into that kind of aspect for this particular aircraft. Why not make it in an Futur exciting way? In a futuristic uh, way, yeah. Okay, and what was the third aspect? Exosuit, what is an exoskeleton suit or what is an exosuit? It's sort of an enhanced strength. Yes, yeah, so there's different versions, there's different subcategories. One is uh, a power lift or, or strength enhancements. Uh, one is um, <laughs> an example, in this case it's flight. Um, yeah, so that's what we'll be diving into the subcategory of the, this jetpack design, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. Or, or drone pack, if you will. So there you go, so it's all happening right now. Okay, so here we are on the bench, and what are we looking at? What's this behind us? Awesomeness in a box. Yes, these are the key aspect components to make this guy go and fly. It's pretty cool. That's right. Um, so what are we looking at here? We've got some ESC, some motors, and some giant propellers. And with a special note to T-Motor for making this series possible. So yeah. let's dive into looking at the parts. Yes. Okay, so let's check out the ESCs. So this particular one here is an FOC. Um, yeah, FOC ESC. FOC. <laughs> ABC. ABC. Yes, uh, 80 amp, 14S. Pretty cool right there. Are we running under 14S, Richard? Um, I think we're going to be doing 12S at this stage. 12S at this stage. Yes, to work with these motors, I think. Yeah, that's right. But it can, uh, if you had it in a different configuration or using it with a different um, thing, you'd be able to go... Um, up to 14s with this particular one, and there you go. 
Oh, it works in PWM and CAN, it says. And there you go, ready? The big reveal. Big reveal. Whoa, there it is there. There it is, there you go. Um, what do we need? So that's that part, is there anything else in there? <laughs> no, 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 that's it. So what, okay. You know one thing about it, it's packed in well. It's packed in well, yes. You've got zip ties in the back. Here. Zip ties in the back. It's the one, one, two. Gently does it. Gently does it on that side. Three phase wires, yeah. Three you phase got a positive one. need on the outside, right? Yeah, it's the one, and then a whole heap of other kind of wires that will work out what they do later on in the build. But there you go, so there you go, that's uh, three wires going to the motors, I assume, and these ones will go to the battery. So technically, if the motor was over here, which is inside this box, these ones will be power, yep, that looks like power to me. And then these ones here, uh, no, the other one would be signal. So one will be signal, right? One will be one signal. One will be telemetry, and then one would be connect to the FOC uh, system. And those ones will be, all need to be hooked up properly to make it work. But there you go, it's looking good. There you go, pretty cool, eh? Very light, quite lightweight. Now, how heavy does it say it is? It is 110 grams, but not particularly heavy. So it's quite, that's good. Yeah. That's good. So we'll probably what mount it on the arm or something. You can see the heat sinks in there. We're looking good. So yeah, let's go and uh, check out the propeller. Alright, so this is a Carbon Fiber G series. Well, for Gangster series, that's what it stands for. That's what they mean, right? Gangster with an A. Gangster. Gangster. <laughs> no, it's very cool. What do you mean, Gangster with an A? Yeah. Gangster with a G. What sort of pitch are we looking at? With an 8.5 inch pitch. It's a very cool propeller. There you go. Dun, 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 dun. And all its glory, it's got a little bit of chrome brass in there. Yeah, it looks like brass. That's well, a nice detail, isn't it? The G series. All right, so you might be asking yourself, how can I tell the left propeller from the right? It's quite simple, it's got a little R there, so that's right, and then you get a little L, it's left, so there you go. Very nice, a very nice quality. You can tell, super, super lightweight, right? Very much so. Perfect for this design. Yeah, cool. Okay, so this is the best part, the motor unboxing. So this is from the V-Series VL8015s with 170 kV, there you go. And rated for 12 S, there you go, 610 grams. But generally for a VTOL system, they might be using these kind of motors to take off, um, like say in a plane, and then like say, like a heavy payload, say, say you're doing surveying or something like that, uh, where you, you don't have a big area to take off on the runway, you just wanna take off straight up into the air. So these ones would be configured around the plane, say, and then in flight, you would turn them off and then you would have like a pusher prop motor and that would drive the plane around to do your surveying for long distance uh, kind of missions like that. Oh, so no. the ratios of a VTOL motors are significantly different to a drone motor. They're designed for heaps of power. I mean, that's what it's all about. They get that takeoff, get the payload underway and away we go. It opens this way. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So pop that up there. Put this one over here. And there you go. Wow, cool. Voila. So there's the VL8015. There you go. What do you think? Very cool. 170 kV. And it's got some bolts and washers and all those sorts of things that come in the pack. I'll just pop them out so you can get a better look. And that's the cables. So yes, you got, um, you'll notice that there's four cables coming out of there. One, two, three, four. And that one there is the one that all that clips into that ESC, one that controls the ability, uh, if you'd configured it in a certain way, you can make it in flight stop so it is the, the most efficient possible in flight while the other drive motor, I guess you'd say, push motor, is doing taking care of the plane aspect. Plane aspect, and then when you come to land, you would be turning those ones back on and then coming down to land and turning the pusher one off. That's what it's all about, maximum takeoff. And efficient, right? And efficient, so yes, you can tell there's um, some pretty good quality right there. And craftsmanship, looking forward to seeing it in there. It's gonna be cool. Put that on there so you can kind of see what that's like. Gives you a bit more of a idea of what this guy will look like. Good start. Now we've seen the motors, now we've seen the propellers and the ESCs. So, 
Mau apa nih? Okay, so we're gonna come up with some design ideas. That's what it's all about. Because, he's, why not? Because he's styled in a, a cyberpunk um, future. That's right, so we're using AI generator. This is called Summons World. So yeah, it's not just what we're using. We thought it would be a good idea to jump into some AI generation to see um, what we can come up with to style this jetpack guy. Yeah, yeah, this is just for ideas. It's, it's not the, um, the finished result. Yeah. Just, just, it's just a different aspect, different approach, more of a modern approach. Yes. So there you go. So let's go and have a look to see what we've come up with. It comes up with a whole right, backstory. Okay. So you, you plug in your uh, what you your, what you think the guy would look like, and then it sort of generates stuff. So he's got um, in this particular guy Halo outfit, isn't he? It's it's green. green. So each time you, you plug in, it comes with a, a generation. It's got a whole thing, um, a whole backstory, like Big Boss 2.0. He was outfitted with a cutting edge cybernetic enhancements, and so forth, so forth. So <laughs> these are cool. um, another one that we came up with. It's about this guy here. 2027 cyberpunk soldier and it just sort of sees all the like different Mandalorian. So each time you plug in it comes up with a different back so which is kind of cool adding to the story of this guy. Okay so our concepts are what coming along quite nicely. We're going to add some more detail and we're also going to jump into the design phase. So let's go and do all that and let's get going. So here's the design guys. Yeah, so we've been working on the computer here. You can see that the motors are mounted upwards and downwards. So there you go. So saying that, let's go and start printing them out. Okay, so it's early in the morning. <laughs> let's get some printing done. We'll use our sponsors Kiwi Fill, um, and we'll use the Machinery Gray Pele Pro. So it's recycled. And, there it goes. and like anything, you've got to keep it dry. And we're going to put it in the little dryer at the back. And we always get uh, more successful prints that way, don't we? If you haven't used a 3D printer before, you always cut it on an angle. We come out here, and it's unlocked. It's locked. Yes, yeah, so uh, here we are on the Mars 5, and uh, since we saw each other last, we've uh, on the live stream, we've connected up the um, fume extractor. Fume extractor to outside, which is a good idea when using a resin printer. Down she go. Just gonna swap this guy out and it's all done and we're gonna go and clean it up. So mask on, gloves on. Yeah, let's get into it. Here it comes. Okay, so there you go guys, there he is all printed out and you can see kind of what we're planning there you go so what we're going to do now is we're going to start hitting it with some airbrushing make it look a bit more detailed so you kind of get the uh, theme that we're going with we've got some other little prints that were printed on the resin and we'll get into it so let's go and put some black paint in and start with a base color okay, so just putting on some base color and then we'll go on for details and stuff like that in a second that just kind of gives you an idea of what it'll look like. But yeah, it's always good to do some airbrushing. Is there a technique on airbrushing, Richard? No, it's like anything, there's a skill. And sometimes with these little guys, you have to do a lot of masking. And then sometimes you don't have to, it's just entirely dependent, right? Going in and adding a little bit of basic weathering, nothing too, too heavy. There's nothing in the world is ever Perfect, is it? In the cyberpunk. Well, yeah, yeah, it's not clean lines, is it? So what do you do with this guy? Well... It looks a bit plain at the moment. I mean, I say that in a general way. <laughs> it's, the design's got me good. The design. I was meaning the paint job. Yeah, the, the, the design is not simple. <laughs> so what are you doing? You're just sort of axing the outside of it, are you? Just a plan. Yeah. 
putting a bit of uh, color pop, this kind of blue, um, like that. Okay, so there you go, guys. We uh, printed out. There you go. So there's a miniaturized version of me. So it's kind of a dead cat design X frame, but we think we might be adding a bit more CG this way, just to line all that up. And the reason why it's a, um, a top and bottom is just to bring those propellers of the 26 inch, which Harry's got in his hand here, bring it in so it's not so offset. Yeah, off so the body. bring that semi gravity in, that'll be spinning here. So we need to add safety guards and all that sort of thing uh, when we're uh, testing it. And it's obviously, and the suit itself is gonna change significantly from this design. Oh yes. This is just a, a, effectively a base layer, so they're going to have material and composite materials. So there you go, it's all uh, looking good. So saying that, I will see you back at h and HQ. You came from the bottom row. No one thought you would surpass them. Turning all the doubts into burning fuel. The top three were not enough. You ain't be So thanks very much for sticking with us on this one. We've kicked off the year with a bang. Yes. That's right, 2026 is here and we're going at it. Yes, there you go. So it should be exciting uh, for the series coming up. Uh, but don't worry, we won't be uh, stopping those other series that we're making on the channel. We will be continuing those ones on too. That's right. 2026 will be very busy. Yeah, very busy. <laughs> there you go. So uh, what were your thoughts on this one? It was just very really good to start something they've been wanting to do for a very long time. Yeah, very, very cool. Very exciting. The idea of human flight <laughs> is, is always a good thing. It's thought. always just there. So there you go. Push the limits of what's possible. Yeah. And remember to add your um, comments, ideas, suggestions about how you think or might suggest uh, us to achieve this in a safe um, but awesome manner. <laughs> there you go. Moving on to the next segment on the show. The movie of the week. Tomb Raider, yes, so it's the video game. That's, and, and the movie, technically. Yes, the uh, movie was made after the video game, and that's the one you should check out. Lara Croft is back, and we are replaying that game. Um, it's in our own free time, and we think it's pretty cool, and it's just quite cool how she's surviving um, in the wild when she got crashed, uh, her boat crashed into an island, and she's out there looking in tombs, doing the adventure, trying to survive, and it's cool. Check out the movie version because it's very much based on that. So there you go. Two two good things make a Awesomeness? Awesomeness. Awesome. Okay, so check those ones out. And final thoughts. Yes, yeah, so there you go. Final thoughts for this one uh, is looking forward to revealing to you guys how we're going to achieve the human flight aspect of it. Uh, but you have to stick around for next episode where that will be uh, dropped. Do you say dropped? Or do you say um, revealed? Yes, so there you go. Flying so, in. Yeah, flying in. Arrived. So there you go. So stick around for that one. It's going to be a good one. The scan version of Harry. And it was it was actually something that we, we used um, when we did the rocket. Miniaturized ourselves and sent ourselves in a model rocket up into the air. So there you go. And there you go. So clearly we survived. So this time, he's going to be a drone pack guy. Okay, so thanks so much for tuning into this exciting episode. We'll see each other uh, next week. Uh, thanks very much to all our sponsors. Special note to uh, T Motor for making this uh, series, exciting series, possible. That's right. And remember to join in on live streams that happen once a week. Um, at the moment, we're in the workshop working on the coaxial RC aircraft, working on the landing gear. So, very much uh, a joint effort there. So, thanks very much and join in. Yes, and what else we got? And uh, you can, when we're not on YouTube, you can join in on the Discord page and also support the channel on Patreon. So, uh, there you go. We'll see each other next week. And three, two, one, go. HRD Racing, HRD Racing, HRD Racing. Yeah.